Good afternoon, class. I'm sorry that I'm not in New York right now, uh, but I thought I would experiment with the possibility that we could do this on the web. I, uh, it's an experiment. Okay, so uh, the plan for today's lecture is to try and get to the point that we can understand relativistic collisions, meaning collisions in which uh, the kinetic energies of the particles are comparable to their rest masses or velocities are close to the speed of light. Um, to properly understand these collisions, we're going to need to use four vectors, and four vectors are described in the lecture notes that you have. Uh, but of course, it moves pretty fast, so I'm going to give a little review of what is written in there about four vectors. Before that, we'll talk about the Lorentz transformation. Before that, we'll talk about the interval. All of those things you should have seen at some level, that is the interval and the, and the uh, Lorentz transformation, you should have seen at some level in recitation this week. Uh, but these are hard concepts and I don't expect you to be totally on board yet. And I'll give you some problems, so in the remaining problem sets you'll have a problem or two with the collision, so you will use it a little bit. But really, this is just an inter, uh, introduction to this idea and the flavor of it and something that gives you some idea of what's going on at the Large Hadron Collider or things that are going on with particle physics. But we're only just scratching the surface. OK, here we go. So you will recall that we, uh, you'll recall that in two lectures ago, so last Thursday, we talked about the possibility of transforming a space-time diagram from one frame to another. So if I have one frame here where I have four events that are laid out, if the events are laid out in a very nice square so that these two events and these two events could be communicating by, uh, uh, by light, uh, by interchanging light signals, um, then if we transform this square to a new frame that's moving with respect to this frame, then these four events will no longer be in a square pattern in this, but in a diamond pattern that permits, that holds the photon trajectories at 45 degrees. So uh, these two events, which were co-spatial, in this frame, in fact, why don't I just draw a world line for these events, a world line for these events. These two events, which are co-spatial, will no longer be co-spatial. This time interval will be longer in this frame. And this world line will now be tilted, because, of course, these stationary events will now be, uh, these station, this stationary object will now be a moving object. This, uh, the other world line will also be moving, but now the 45 degree lines look like this. And we're still 45 degree lines because light trajectories that were light trajectories in this frame will also be light trajectories in this frame. That is, the speed of light is the same in both frames. But the, the in this case, the what was a square of events here has uh, sheared into a parallelogram of events over here. Uh, and this is just a pure geometric description of the Lorentz transformation. Now, in recitation, you use the Lorentz transformation. And the Lorentz transformation has the following form, that if you have, if you have a delta t, I'll call it a c delta t prime, that is in this frame that we're trying to calculate, and a delta x prime in this frame that we're trying to calculate. Based on a delta t and a delta x in the original frame, they're related by gamma c delta t in this frame. That's time dilation. But then there's a plus or minus beta gamma delta x. And here, it looks just the same, but with everything reversed. Delta x plus or minus beta gamma c. And this is a linear transformation in the sense that the new coordinates are just linear combination of the old co coordinates. You just multiply by constants and add or subtract them. 
Um, so you can write this. I, I mentioned that for the math nerds, there's a, there's a way of thinking about this in terms of linear algebra. The linear algebra way of thinking about this, and I'm not going to explain this, I'm just going to write it on the board, is that you can think of it as C delta T and delta X prime, the prime coordinates, as forming a column matrix or a column vector. And this is related to the original coordinates by a matrix, which looks like gamma plus or minus beta gamma plus or minus beta gamma gamma. And that's a two by two matrix, which then multiplies the original coordinates, which were C delta T and delta X. And I mentioned uh, in passing uh, in, last week that this make two by two matrix here can be thought of as having eigenvectors, which are the light trajectories, and eigenvalues, which are about the stretching and shrinking of the light trajectory. So, so this light trajectory here, this you can think of this as a vector in the diagram. This vector transforms to a new vector which is still at the same angle, so that's an eigenvector of this matrix or this transformation. Now, I want to take, I'm not going to go any more into linear algebra. This is not a course about linear algebra, and I don't expect people to know about linear algebra. So I, that was just there as extra if you're interested in linear algebra. I don't want to talk about that. But one thing I do want to talk about is the idea that points in space-time could be thought of as vectors. Okay, so we're going to think about the points or the displacements between points on these diagrams as being vectors. Okay, so let's think about that. Okay, so if, as you know, as we've been saying, the big thing about special relativity is it takes us from a two-dimensional or a three-dimensional world and takes us to a three-plus-one-dimensional world. We have to consider time when we consider space because when you make transformations like this, when you move through space, it changes not just the spatial relations of the events, but it also changes the time relations of the events. These two events, which were simultaneous in this frame, become non-simultaneous in this frame. Um, and these two events, which were co-spatial in this frame, <laughs> not only become non-co-spatial in this frame, but also happen, at different, uh, happen with a different time interval. Space and time get mixed up. So it, it makes sense to think about the possibility that we could uh, generalize the vector to a four vector. And in this case, so let's imagine, let's think about two arbitrary events on this, in this frame. Um, I'll just choose one. So let's choose an event here. Let's call it event A. Let's call this event here, which we already have, event B. And then I can think about the four vector, which is the displacement from on the space-time diagram from event A to event B. That uh, four vector has four components. It has a delta T, well, I should call it a C delta T, a delta X, a delta Y, and a delta Z. Because there's three spatial dimensions and one time dimension. For now, we don't care about these because we're thinking about just one-dimensional problems. We're just thinking about the xt plane. So we're only going to worry about these two components. But I guess I'll try and write these two components. I might get lazy, but I'll try and write them in. So, so when I think about this vector ab, this vector going from a to b, let's call this vector little a, with a vector hat on it. Um, I'm not sure that that's going to be visible on the video. In fact, I'm not sure that any of this is going to be visible on the video. If you're finding having trouble reading the board, uh, hopefully you can switch your uh, YouTube to see it in HD. Or maybe I'll put the video up in somewhere other than YouTube. Anyway, uh, let's call this vector here, uh, I'm just going to call it little a, let me call it little a, little a. Okay, so this vector little a has some time difference, some spatial difference in the x direction, and nothing in the y or z directions. Now, 